Hi there, if you've got a project coming up and you think about using expanding foam, you might want to take a look at today's video because I've recently started using one of these applicator guns and when comparing it with a cheaper alternative, there's no contest. So I was in my local builders merchants recently buying some expanding foam because I'm currently in the middle of refurbishing our bedroom and I've needed expanding foam for a few jobs like piping in around the new windows I've just fitted and I've even used it below a beam that you can see here that had a big gap underneath it when I stripped off all the wall lining that had been hiding it for centuries. Now when I was in the builders merchants I got my head turned by this, this Everbuild foam applicator gun. I've always bought in the past these cheap expanding foams that have a throwaway plastic applicator on the top. I've taken the view, well I'm only going to be using this once or twice so there's no point in spending the extra money on the applicator gun, is there? Well actually I think there is. I decided to take the plunge and buy this applicator gun, apart from anything else I thought it would make a useful video and actually what I've learnt about it has changed my views on these applicator guns and having started using it I'd never go back to using this. So let's run a quick comparison of each and I'll explain to you why I prefer the applicator gun. So this is your typical can of expanding foam, again I bought this from my local builders merchants. It tends to come with these plastic applicators. Now. This applicator screws on the top, you use the foam upside down like you would any expanding foam and you press your hands on the trigger of the applicator like this to squeeze out the foam. But the problem with this is once you've used it the foam sets pretty quickly and of course it sets on your wall but it also sits set in this foam nozzle and that is going to represent a bit of an issue for you if you've maybe got two windows to do like I had in this room or you're working say over the course of a weekend and you can't get everything ready for the foam in one go. Or more likely you suddenly realise a few hours later that there's another void that needs filling. Now you can clean out these throwaway applicators. You can pull off the tube and this sounds bonkers but I have been known to blow a lot of the residue out before it sets in both the part that attaches to the can and also to the long piece. Uh, it does still keep expanding after that but you've got rid of most of it and then you can get something like this chopstick and push it through afterwards to clean out the remainder of the foam. This is actually an applicator that I have used so it does show that these can be cleaned out. But the problem is that is a bit of a faff and also the other issue you've got I find a week or so later when I want to reuse the foam I find once you've broken the seal and started using it the can becomes very temperamental and it won't actually squeeze the foam out. Part of the problem you've got is inside the actual nozzle on the can itself the foam sets and it's very hard to clean out which is one of the reasons that these cans that are designed for these throwaway applicators are so hard to reuse. So then you find yourself in a situation like I've got here where I've got half a can of foam left, haven't been able to use it and so it's in the bin, what a waste. And that is where this applicator gun excels because it's designed for contractors who are using expanding foam on a daily basis and don't want to have to keep cleaning out these plastic applicators. So a quick look at the can, you can see immediately the difference. It comes with this wider fixing on the top with a removable cover. I actually used this one last weekend so it'll be really interesting to see how we get on with it today. The applicator itself is a nice sturdy well made piece of kit and it has this nozzle on the end which you see has a retracting piece inside when you pull the trigger. You get a couple of attachments in the box to fix onto it I guess so that it can be used in tight spaces. The advantage actually of this uh, nozzle whilst it's going to be difficult to clean out it does mean that you're not going to get any foam around the base of the primary nozzle but last time I used it, I just used it like this. Where the canister is left attached to the gun for short periods of time, it has this knurled black knob on the back which locks the trigger in place to stop the trigger being accidentally fired. 
before attaching the applicator you just press the trigger a few times because all these applicators are pressure tested in manufacture and so sometimes some air can be left in the applicator itself. There's also ball bearings you can see here within the valve mechanism they recommend I suppose particularly on reuse when you've used it once before just to insert something I've actually got a little drill bit here and just to press that bearing down just to make sure it's moving freely as this one is within the valve mechanism. And then it's simply a question of screwing the applicator onto the canister like this. You just need to do it hand tight. And I'm just going to ch check this to make sure it's working because as I said I used it a couple of weeks ago. As you see that's working beautifully. And then we're good to go. Quick spray of water to moisten the surfaces. These beams will sit behind the insulated plasterboard and enable me to get a really good fixing when I attach the radiator to the wall. I'm moistening the foam evenly after application because according to the instructions if you don't do this it can cause undesirable foam expansion. So the great thing about this applicator gun, unlike the plastic applicators which are for a few minutes are going to clog up with foam which solidifies and then you've got to clean it out or throw it away, with the applicator gun because it's pressurised you can leave this on the canister for 24 hours or however long it takes between your uses of the foam without worrying about the foam hardening inside the gun. But if you do decide to clean it out, for example when you've finished your canister and you're not going to use it for a while, I'm now going to show you how you do that. Now, you see here we've got the nozzle with the extension piece on it and foam coming out of the end. Where this really comes into its own now is in the cleaning process. So if we've decided we want to clean this off now, we simply remove the canister like that. We then attach the foam cleaner always in the upright position, like this, and then I focus on the end here, we fire the excess foam, another couple of quick sprays, and the gun now is completely clean and empty. What I particularly like about the spray can, it has this clever little extra nozzle piece so that if you have got a little bit of foam on the edge of your applicator gun nozzle like this you can simply give it a spray and a wipe and it's good as new again. Off that matter off the canister of foam itself. So what about pricing? Well this is the interesting bit. Yes the applicator gun itself is reasonably expensive. You can find it on Amazon for £17.49. Toolstation have a similar version for £15.79. I bought mine at the Builders Merchants and it cost pretty much the same price as Amazon about £17.50. And then the foam itself, the Constructor Pro, I bought this particularly because once cured it's rot proof and moisture and temperature resistant, um, which is important as I'm putting this behind insulated plasterboard, and that costs £10 per can at tool station. But if you're not so worried about these sort of pro grade attributes, you can buy perfectly good expanding foam at £5.37 from tool station, which interestingly is the same price or actually slightly cheaper than Sudal's expanding foam for their handheld spray which is the plastic applicator I showed you at the start of this video. Similarly Everbuild's handheld plastic applicator version is £5.37. 
And as for the foam cleaner, Amazon sell this for £7.22 a can, and again you can get it at tool station for less than that at £4.98. I've used this can a few times now and it still feels well over half full, so it's got a few, quite a few cleans left in it. So once you've spent an initial outlay of you know, £17 for the applicator gun and four or five quid for the spray can, you're pretty much on a level playing field with the handheld plastic applicator version. And arguably because of the wastage in this, you're actually saving yourself money in the long run if you use one of these. I know what you're thinking, I'm not gonna use it very often, I'm a DIYer like you, Charlie, but I like the fact that I've cut down on the wastage and I've got an applicator gun that I can just fire up, use, clean, and then it's there for next time I wanna use it. The prices I've given will obviously date as this video stays online, so check out the description tab below the video where I'll be updating the prices going forward if when you find this video, it was posted some time ago. A quick reminder on how to get into that, you can access it by clicking on the little arrows if you're viewing it from a phone or on the show more button if you're viewing the video on a computer. And there are some affiliate links in there. If you buy through clicking on one of those links, it doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help me and it helps to support the channel because I get a small commission on whatever it is you're buying. So thank you very much again for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please click on the like button below. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. See you soon.